Good evening. Freed for Kindness. What a great song, Ryan. I asked Ryan about picking out kindness songs, and they're, they're, you, just, you nailed it. Um, the greatest example of kindness is Jesus, of course, and we'll refer to that tonight. Let's go to God in prayer. Our God and our Father, we are so thankful to be gathered here this evening, uh, brothers and sisters, to uh, share some thoughts about the fruit of the Spirit, Father, and to reflect on the freedom we have in your Son. Thank you, Father, for Christian love and Christian kindness. Thank you for brothers and sisters that, that live it every day, Lord, and, and show it every day. Bless us, Father, as we reflect on our freedom in you uh, tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, I told Tim I would just get up here. I, I wanted to do the uh, recognition uh, for our servicemen and first responders first. And of course, that just plays right into our theme of freedom. Uh, free for you, uh, Galatians 5, 13. Uh, for you were called to freedom, brothers. Only don't use your freedom as... so nailed to this thing I'm not going to move around what's the best thing guys just like this okay good sorry normally I'm walking around in a classroom what? oh yeah okay you... hey this is great I'm so nervous this is really taking care of the nerves you want to just get rid of this thing because I'm going to be nailed to this what's the best thing turn it off stick it on here okay I'll try my best I wore my freedom tie tonight. Okay, there. I remember so much. Uh, I, got, I got the best two sons-in-law a guy could have. Um, one of them was speaking here one time, Cal Butt. He was throwing stuff off, asking, making things in a, in a, uh, a lesson, and uh, he was talking about some sort of dinosaur, and up, up popped a picture of the dinosaur. I remember he said, who are those guys up there? So, Thanks for working your magic, guys. I'll try to be as cooperative as I can. Um, so, freedom. Uh, we talked a bit about freedom already, about our freedom that we have in this great country, and that Christians, we're freed from sin. And um, our lesson tonight is, is, is about uh, kindness, but as we proceed into that, uh, let's review just a little bit of, of our scriptures, which there's a Bible down there that I'm going to have to have. Okay, all right, so yes, I'm nervous. I teach a class on Sunday morning with some young people in it, and this is really out of my comfort zone. So, uh, Paul taught with familiar images of the, of the Roman world. Uh, soldiers' armor, warfare, uh, Christian warfare, striving in the games, running a race. In Romans and Galatians, he captures the idea of slavery and freedom. Uh, estimates are that uh, one in six of the uh, population of the Roman Empire were slaves, uh, possibly 10 million slaves. And even though slavery or involuntary servitude had several manifestations, all these had one thing in common, they were not free. Uh, everyone, however, slave, master, or freedman, were all slaves to sin, as Christ said in John 8, 34. Um, let's read a few scriptures on freedom in, in Christ. Um, now the Lord, uh, 2 Corinthians 3.17, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. John 8.36, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Um, Galatians 5.13, which we're going to refer to a little bit later, For you were called to freedom, brothers, only you do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Uh, Galatians 5.1, again, we'll refer back to that in, when we get open, open the Bible. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand therefore and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery, the analogy of slavery to sin. And then uh, Romans uh, 6, 6 through 7, we'll be reading from the scriptures on that. Uh, Paul addresses slavery and, and servitude to sin in Romans. But if you want to turn over to Romans uh, chapter 6, which my yellow sticky has disappeared. There it is. Okay. Romans 6, 6 through 7, a key verse there. 
I'm sorry. I'm going to. I promise not to walk around. When if I get relaxed, I'm going to walk around. It's going to mess you guys up. Um, so uh, Romans six, uh, knowing this that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Thus the theme of our series: freed from sin and free to bear fruit for Christ. Um, Romans uh, 6, uh, 12, uh, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it, it in its lust. And um, 15 through 22, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of the flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. Verse 22 tells us that we are freed from sin and our fruit is to be holiness. In chapter 8 of Romans, verse 3, Paul tells us that we who have been safe, freed from sin, must walk after the Spirit, not the flesh. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, uh, a passage that I've read all my life but only recently have come to the realization of what it really, really means. A lot of us know this by heart. I want to read it. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. All my life I've read this verse, we've discussed faith, works, faith, works, and this is it. We're saved by grace, not of ourselves, not of works. It's a gift. Our works are the fruit that we bear because God created us for that purpose, to bear fruit. And thus our series, our sermon series from Galatians about uh, the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, in, in Philippians 1, 9 through 11, uh, Paul tells Christians to be filled with the fruits of righteousness. And over in Galatians chapter 5, we, he categorizes those as we are reading week by week about the fruit of the Spirit. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about kindness. A Christian is to be kind. And a great example of kindness is, 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 is Jesus Christ, a great song that Ryan picked for that. Um, what do you think when you think of kindness? Your picture in your mind. Uh, I'd re originally envisioned having a class and I could ask you questions you'd answer, but it, it, it wasn't going to work that way. Well, mine is a scout walking a little old lady across the street. That's what I picture as kindness. And I know there's some ex-scouters in here, but there was a thing that we remembered. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. You're allowed to memorize that. But that was kind of the picture, the, the scout leading the, leading the little old lady uh, across, across the street. Um, this is why I need to spread out. I've got all this stuff. Quotes on quotes on kind. You're going to get tired of quotes. Oh, I forgot my quote at the beginning. If you can read in English, thank a teacher. If you can, no, if you can read this, thank a teacher. If you read it in English, thank a vet. And uh, all gave some, some gave all. Thank you guys once again, once again for our freedom. Um, I expect to pass through life but once. If therefore there be any kindness I can show or any good thing I can do to any fellow being, let me do it now and not defer or neglect it as I shall not pass this way again. William Penn. Those who bring sunshine into the lives of others cannot keep it from themselves. That's J.M. Barry, the writer of Peter Pan. The only people whom you should try to get even with are those who have helped you. In order to, to be remembered, leave nothing behind but goodness. 
Life is short, but there is always time for courtesy. Emerson. Don't cast a shadow on anyone unless you're providing shade. Treat every person as if their heart was breaking. More often than not, you will be right. The best way to knock the chip off your neighbor's shoulder is to pat him on the back. Remember, everyone you meet is afraid of something, loves something, and has lost something. A single act of kindness throws out roots in all directions, and the roots spring up and make new trees. Amelia Earhart. Be a rainbow in somebody else's cloud, Maya Angelou. You cannot do a kindness too soon, for you never know how soon it will be too late. Again from Emerson. Too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. Leo Bascaglia. This is a verse uh, from uh, one of the 19th century primers. Kind hearts are the gardens, kind thoughts are the roots, kind words are the blossoms, kind deeds are the fruits. From uh, Mark Twain, it's been quoted by several other people, Lang kindness is a language the deaf can hear and the blind can see. And the last one, constant kindness can accomplish much. As the sun makes ice melt, kindness causes misunderstanding, mistrust, and hostility to evaporate. Albert Schweitzer. Uh, Ryan was... Uh, Ryan was telling me there weren't many songs on kindness. I told him I had the lyrics to Glenn Campbell's song, Try a Little Kindness, here, but uh, I'll just read you a, a line or two from that. If you see your brother standing by the road with a heavy load from the seeds he sowed, if you see your sister falling by the way, just stop and say you're going the wrong way. you got to try a little kindness. Show a little kindness. Just shine your light for everyone to see. And you all probably know the rest of the, rest of the song by heart. So... Kindness. Kindness is. What is kindness? Kindness is, according to Tyndall's Bible Dictionary, the state of being that includes the attributes of loving affection, sympathy, friendliness, patience, patience, pleasantness, gentleness, and goodness. Kindness is a quality shown in a way a person speaks and acts. It is more purposeful than emotional. Webster's uh, 1828 Dictionary. As an inner disposition, Kindness is goodwill, benevolence, that disposition which delights in contributing to the happiness of others, which is exercised cheerfully in gratifying their wishes, supplying their needs, or alleviating their distresses. Kindness ever accompanies love. And as an outward demonstration, an act of goodwill, any act of benevolence which promotes the happiness or welfare of others. Attention to the needs and desires of others are deemed acts of kindness. There's not much original for me tonight. It's, it's stuff I pulled off uh, various websites, but I thought that those really summed up kindness. I was thinking kindness is really better seen than talked about. Uh, kindness is not an emotion or feeling, but it's a choice. It's a growth process. It's part of the fruit of the spirit. It's uh, uh, the whole analogy of fruit is growing and bearing fruit, and so we grow in kindness. The New Testament word for kindness is translated from a Greek word which can describe gentleness, goodness, uprightness, generosity, and graciousness. Some synonyms, uh, charity, grace, humanity, affection, patience, tolerance, compassion, hospitality, generosity, benevolence, uh, actions, help, service, aid, favor, assistance. Kindness is more than compassion. The very nature of exhibiting kindness to another person makes that person have a sense of worth and usefulness. By exhibiting kindness to another person, we are affirming their worth as a person. We are telling them that they are important enough for us to be inconvenienced or give them special attention. We'll talk a little more about that when we talk about Christ's example of kindness. Kindness must be learned. Regret, regrettably, many children are not being taught kindness, and society and media often teach the opposite. 
Um, I don't like reality TV. Uh, from, I always put it in quotation marks because I can't believe that's real. But uh, I know there was this uh, the survivor on the island. Don't laugh at me because I don't ever watch it. I, you know why I don't watch it? They try to kick people off the island. There's no kindness there. It's like there's, it's just all these things are, are voting people off. They're not trying to help each other. I was reading an article today about the oldest ranger, uh, oldest, recent, oldest recent graduate of the Army Ranger School. A 39-year-old Air Force sergeant that felt like he needed to go through there. But part of their, part of their operation is it's a teamwork, and your team gets through. And, and if, you're, if a guy fails, it's your team's fault. It's still opposite of this, quote, reality, TV, this our society. But kindness is portrayed as weakness in people. And rather than being helped, uh, we eliminate people from these various programs. And, not, not very, and with very little, well, with no kindness, obviously. How important is kindness? Uh, once again, nothing original with me. A, a study of 37 cultures around the world back in 2003 found that the most desired trait in a mate was kindness. Communities flourish where kindness abounds as they strengthen through mutual trust. Uh, science says, at least according to the person on the internet that I pulled this off from, science says when we support others, we increase a brain chemical called dopamine, giving us an emotional lift, which in turn produces another chemical that lowers blood pressure and lowers the levels of chemicals associated with aging. So just the thought about being kind and not having to, not having to uh, age quite so fast. Um, scriptures on kindness, several. And um, this is one, we talk about learning, uh, Learning kindness. Um, this is the one that the kids learn when they're very little, Ephesians 4.32, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Uh, Galatians, back in Galatians, uh, Galatians 6.2, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6.10, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good to all men, especially to them of the household of faith. Um, in, uh, in, in, in memory of Brother Jerry Jenkins, uh, kindness is mentioned 78 times in the Bible in some form or another, mostly in the Old Testament. It's actually only about 10, 10, 10 verses actual about kindness in the New Testament. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32 says, to get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice, be kind and compassionate one to another, forgiving each other just as Christ just as in Christ, God forgave you from the New International. Our example of kindness is Jesus Christ, as so fitly brought forth in the song we sung. He opened his arms to the weak, the sinner, the untouchables. He saw beyond the external to the heart. He paid attention to those people who society said were not deserving of his time, women and children primarily. He showed them their worth to him. Uh, in Matthew 11, 28 and 29, he said, Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. A little bit about body language and, and, uh, and, and kindness and response to kindness. Um, I don't know, I was I'm very blessed to go to Harding College. I don't remember, I, 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 I must have learned uh, enough to get me to a couple uh, career spots in life, but I remember a professor that said, if you want a child to really warm up to you and relate to that child, get down on the child's level. And if you're able to kneel down, it's getting harder and harder at age 69 to do that, but if you're able to kneel down, kneel down that little child's going to run up to you. And, uh, how many pictures of Jesus do we see with the children coming to him and he's sitting down? So if you can't kneel, sit down. But if that little kid sees you on his level, he's going to warm up to you. And, and again, to Jesus. Jesus was not afraid to touch people. And touch makes that connection. It, 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 it makes that, it, it, it puts you together. It shows your concern. And he touched the untouchable. But he wasn't afraid to do that. And, and, and he showed that connection and he made that person 
feel worth and feel worth worthy of his time. It takes genuine effort to be truly kind. Um, again, back to Galatians 5, 19-21, uh, Paul refers to human nature as the flesh and our natural tendencies as the works of the flesh. Uh, among this list in, in, in various translations are hatred, jealousy, selfish ambitions, and envy. All these are self-centered. Kindness requires the opposite. Do not be self-centered. It's a caring concern for others. You must connect with someone on some level, in some way. Uh, let nothing be done, uh, Philippians 2, 3 and, 3 and 4, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness, lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out, not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others, Philippians 2, 3 and 4. And that brings a, just another little, I guess, point. Often, in the research I was doing, several guys said, be kind to yourself. You know, do something for yourself. Take some time for yourself. Be kind to yourself as well as being kind to other people. Um, examples of kindness. I, I, uh, I mean, you, you can just look around and think of all of them. There's, there's, a, there's a guy here. He's in a wheelchair. He's not here tonight. But he'll call you on the phone. He'll pray with you. He'll send you cards. Uh, he does what he can. He connects with you in that way. Um, all of us have had experiences. I, I never realized how important it was to sit with people in the hospital until my dad had surgery in Ohio and we flew up there. And all during his four-hour surgery, all morning long, people were coming and going from church. And brought White Castles even. That was really... Uh, that's, a, that's a small joke. But that's Ohio. But, but it, it taught me the lesson of how important it is to be there with somebody when they're having surgery because it takes their mind off the surgery and encourages them. Um, of course, the, the acts of kindness we see so often are when there's a death in the family or something and so many things. I, I, there was a brother that polished everybody's shoes in the closet. Uh, that's all he could do, but he did. There, there was a sister answered the phone and just took notes on the phone. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of us have had personal experience with this. We lived long enough. We've, we've been in, in, in congregations long enough. Uh, I remember uh, one time, and, and you know, your, your part about your connection is some people are not comfortable with this touchy-feely stuff. And, and I remember one time I was just totally an emotional wreck. And, and, and I saw this big brother, big old shoulders, and I just collapsed in his arms. And he was not a hugger, but he gave me a warm hug, and I sought him out every time I needed a Need a, need a lift. I found a couple guys like that, and uh, not, this, not generally a hugger, but they definitely gave that, gave that bit of kindness. So kindness doesn't take a lot of time. It does take a connection. It takes, it takes, it takes a little bit of an effort. We'll talk about that in a little bit before, before our time is up. Um, so a, a phone call, a card, a pat on the back, a touch. Um, so getting down to the little, little guys and just, just, just saying hey to them. I asked my uh, young adults class to throw some things t to me about their experiences with kindness and got, got, got a good couple, several good responses. Uh, on the youth campaign, while we were eating dinner at CeCe's Pizza, I did not ask or it was not said if they recognized Darby Reisner or not at that CeCe's Pizza. But a man was talking to Jordan about our group and what we were doing. He then went out to his car, came back, and gave Jordan a hundred dollar bill to buy us pizza because he appreciated our mission. Another couple said uh, we had someone buy our family's meal while eating at Steak, steak and Shake. Uh, since Priscilla's a public person, I'll, I'll put her name in this one. Uh, Priscilla says the Rockville Church found out it was Whit, Brooke, and Abigail's birthdays this week. One of the elders ordered a cake. Someone bought bought them special suckers and they all made them feel like a big deal. Our group from Roebuck also has made them feel special with presents, kind words, and singing. It is not so hard being a preacher's kid when we have a church family like this. Another one, uh, when her husband was in college, the van he was driving stopped working and it wasn't going to be worth it to fix it. His neighbor in the apartment complex where he lived knocked on his door one day and handed him the key to a car. It was a little beat up, but it was still a car. Another one from a young mother. <clears throat> Since my baby has been born, I've had several different people offer to help me with my groceries. And one lady in particular loaded my groceries into my van at Walmart before she went into the store. 
I've been blessed more times than I can count by brothers and sisters in Christ from offering to babysit to bringing food. We love our church family. Acts of kindness, no, ma no, no matter how big or small, go a long way. Goes to those quotations about roots and, and ripple effect. This is another one some of you will remember, uh, a young, uh, young policeman up in the Gardendale, Fultondale area who actually had a connection with this church, William Stacy was his name, uh, made the papers and I think even made some national news because there was a lady, I think, who was about to shoplift. He caught, stopped her, found out she was fairly destitute, and bought her family groceries. And of course that went viral, I guess the word is, and, uh, but just that little act of kindness, just how it impressed so many people. Uh, last one, when I was in college, I was a few dollars short of buying my groceries, so my card was declined. The man behind me said he'd pay the entire bill. He paid eight, he'd paid for $80 worth of groceries. Best day ever. <laughs> so that, I mean, that's, you know, I, we could just probably spend the entire 40 minute time of this class just writing down everything that people have done for us or you know we've done for people and so forth and and, and creative creative acts of kindness as well um, there, there's this term random acts of kindness. I don't think there's any random act of kindness they're all purposeful uh, examples of kindness from the scriptures um, Proverbs 31 the virtuous woman uh, she extends her hand to feed the poor Yes, she reaches out her hand to the needy. Uh, on her tongue is a law of kindness. Dorcas was full of work, good works and charitable, charitable deeds, Acts 9, 36 through 39. Um, and Barnabas, of course, his name meant son of encouragement. And of course, uh, one of the prime uh, examples of, of, of kindness in the scriptures is uh, the Good Samaritan. Uh, we know this story. We know about the man traveling down from Jerusalem to Jer uh, Jericho, he fell among robbers. We don't need to read the story. We know the story. We know about the Levite and the priest who did not want to get involved. We, and we know about the Samaritan, a, a person of a ostracized culture, and came upon this man and, uh, and, and rendered him aid. And uh, there were several things to, come, to take away from the Good Samaritan. Um, he is, of course, the, kind, the picture of, of compassion. Um, the Samaritan did not pass by or ignore the one in, in need. The Samaritan took action to do what he could to help meet the need. Kindness is love in action. Kindness is not an attitude we develop in our heart. It's not a new way of thinking about the situations we encounter. Kindness has to get out. Kindness held in is not kindness at all. Kindness will take a risk. The Samaritan did not stop to consider if the robbers were still lurking behind the rocks. He just saw a need and he went to aid that man. Uh, kindness will pay the price. A good Samaritan didn't examine the man's wound, decide if he could pay for this care or not. He just acted. He dressed the man's wounds. He took him to the inn. He, and, and he offered to pay the full amount and more. If he didn't know if the man was going to survive or not. Uh, kindness will put others first. This Samaritan was uh, apparently a businessman, is my been impression. He had, an, he had a meeting to go to, he had a, place, he had a place to be, but he stopped what he was doing, interrupted his schedule to take care of this man and, and, and exhibit kindness. And kindness will finish what it starts. He didn't just man, bandage his wounds and move on, he took the man with him, put him up, made sure he was taken care of. And kindness does not seek recognition. We do not know the name of the Samaritan. Uh, if it is a true story versus a, uh, versus a parable. And then uh, the, last, the last thing uh, from the scriptures about kindness is, is David and Mephibosheth. Um, for those of you who remember uh, this reference, reference on this, it's uh, Samuel 9, 1 through 8. And David has assumed the throne. He's, he has uh, become the rightful uh, king of, of Israel. And uh, after he settled in, he, he asked the question, is there anyone left of the house of Saul that I may show kindness? This is uh, 2 Samuel 9, 1 through, 8, 1 through 8. That I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake. He'd made a promise to Jonathan. He was going to uh, care for his family. And they did locate Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was the grandson of Saul, a son of Jonathan, the last surviving son, crippled and unable to take care of himself. And David said in verse 7, uh, 
when Mephibosheth came before him, do not fear, I will show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you the land of Saul, your father, and you shall eat at my table always. So here's some observations about the kindness of David, and we're going to, David is a type of Christ. We're going to see some uh, obvious, obvious connect, uh, similarities with Christ's kindness. Uh, it's, it's directed at his enemies. Uh, Saul's family were the enemies of David, and David's kindness was directed at the remnants of Saul's family. Uh, it, it was kindness cheerfully exercised. It wasn't begrudgingly enacted. David was not required to show any kindness to the house of Saul. That was, again, he had been his enemy. Uh, it was kindness based on a promise, the promise that David had made to Jonathan. It, 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 it's a kindness that's actually sought out the object of kindness. He looked for Mephibosheth. He searched for him. It's a kindness that cheerfully embraces no repayment. Mephibosheth was crippled. He had to be cared for. He could not make any contribution to David's household, but it didn't matter to David. It's a kindness that drives out fear. David said, do not fear. It's a kindness that gives one what one does not deserve. In that day and age, the family of the previous king were pretty much executed and dispatched. Anybody that would be a pretender to the, pope, to the throne was executed. It didn't happen with Mephibosheth. And it's the kindness that brings one into a new family. David just said, you're going to eat at my table always. So it, it, it just brought the epitome of kindness, and we extrapolate that in, into Christ as well. Titus 3, 4 through 7. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us. Not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And in, in, in comparison to the kindness of Mephibosheth, Jesus demonstrates God's kindness towards his enemies, because we are sinners are his enemies. Uh, he gave his life willingly for us. Jesus said in John 10, 8, No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. Jesus demonstrated God's kindness because he came as a fulfillment of promise. He, gave, he, 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 he sought us. He sought the lost. Um, he gave salvation to us. Uh, he demonstrated God kindness, God's kindness because in him there is no fear. He demonstrated God's kindness because we receive what we don't deserve. We deserve punishment. We receive grace and salvation. And Jesus welcomes us into his family. The ultimate example of kindness is Jesus Christ. God and God giving his son, Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us. That makes all the kindnesses we might do wherever pale in comparison. We Christians are to bear fruit. One of the fruit we are to bear is kindness. We are to be known for our kindness. I think we're almost time for the bell, so thank you very much. You can get up and show kindness to one another. <laughs> hey, hey the, the, the good thing about this was you're going to be kind to me no matter what tonight, however bad a job I did. This is great. <laughs>